Hey guys, what's up? Eli from BB Tech here, and today we're going to be looking at Huawei's new flagship. So we've had our hands on the P20 and the P20 Pro for a little while now, and we're ready to give you our thoughts on using it. So before we dive in, this handset itself comes in two sizes, the 5.8 inch P20 and the 6.1 inch P20 Pro. But there is a few differences between these models other than that screen size. While they both have very reflective mirror glass finishes on the back, the edges of the P20 Pro are a more reflective material compared to the P20's matte finish. The P20 Pro also has an IR blaster on the top where the P20 does not. And of course, on the back, the P20 Pro has that extra camera. The camera is the big selling point here and we'll get into that shortly. So this phone is running Huawei's Emotion UI 8.1 based on Android 8.1. So that's the latest Android operating system straight out of the box, which is great. So the front features a full HD display for both devices, which is lower res than other flagships out right now, which normally feature a 1440p display. But it looks nice. I thought it was sharp enough and bright enough, and this is probably why this phone has such an amazing battery life, which personally, I would trade over a bump in resolution on a handheld device. There's also a natural tone display setting that measures the ambient color temperature and adjusts the screen's temperature to match, which is pretty sweet. Other than that, the P20 Pro also has six gigs of RAM, while the P20 has four, and both devices have no expandable storage, which may be a little disappointing, but they do come with 128 gigs built in, which is heaps. So if we take a look here, we've been installing apps and games and taking heaps of photos and videos, and we still have 103 gigs free. So yeah, that should last a long time. Okay, so you may have noticed by now the notch at the top. Personally, I don't mind the notch. Huawei do a good job at separating the icons either side, and it is used for certain buttons. And if you're watching a video, it won't expand past the edge like it does on the iPhone, for example. If you really don't like it, there is a setting where you can remove the notch, and instead it will just fill the sides with a black background. So it's just personal preference. As for biometrics, you have a fingerprint sensor down the bottom, which works great. And there is facial recognition, which is super quick, basically instant. And it also works in really low light, which was impressive. I tried it in pitch black darkness and it did have a bit of trouble, but as long as there's even a small amount of light, your phone will unlock quickly. And you get a few options. This paired with the raise to wake feature means you can set it up so you don't even have to see the lock screen at all. Show you coming from the side. It's locked, it's locked, it's locked, boom. So quick. Or you can have it where notifications won't show until it recognizes your face. And then requires a swipe up to access the home screen, which is cool. You can also get rid of the on-screen navigation buttons to give you more screen real estate. And instead use the capacitive fingerprint scanner to navigate. So a tap to go back, a short hold to return home, and a swipe for the app switcher. Once you get used to it, it's a really intuitive feature. So the feature everyone wants to know about is the Leica branded camera and it's amazing. Both devices have a 24 megapixel front facing camera, which is unheard of. There is a skin softening mode on top, and even when you turn this all the way down to zero, it still seems to soften the image, which I personally don't mind. I need all the help I can get, but if you're looking for a more natural front facing camera, this is something to keep in mind. As for the backs, the P20 has a 12 megapixel RGB sensor and a 20 megapixel monochrome, while the P20 Pro is the first mobile device to feature three cameras. So the top is an 8 megapixel telephoto lens, then we get the main 40 megapixel RGB sensor, and below that a 20 megapixel monochrome. Now when you're taking photos, by default the phone will be set to 10 megapixel images, and this uses a combination of the different sensors to give you great looking detail in each shot. Setting this to 40 megapixels does make for a sharper image, but removes the ability to zoom. In Huawei's presentation, they talked a lot about AI. AI, 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 AI. This phone is able to automatically recognize what it's looking at and change the settings for your photos accordingly. So if it's a green field, the camera switches to greenery mode or blue sky mode, and it even switched to dog mode when we found a dog. All automatically, and the photos usually come out looking pretty good. Sometimes the greenery mode can be pretty aggressive. There were occasions where I found myself fighting with the AI system, but it's easy to turn these settings off. So that telephoto lens enables three times optical zoom, which produces closer images in full resolution. And then beyond that, there's a five times hybrid zoom, which still comes out very clear. And you can crank this all the way up to 10 times digital, but this is when we start to lose a little bit of quality. Either way, the fact that you can get this close to a subject on a mobile phone is crazy. The autofocus on this camera is also blazing fast. Even with video, the focus and exposure seem to change instantly, 
and just knew what I wanted to focus on. 1080p has really good stabilization, but if you do set this to 4K video, you don't get any, which is something to keep in mind. But the thing I was most impressed with was the night mode. So you just hit the shutter button and it takes about five seconds. And what this is doing is taking a long exposure shot, but because of the stabilization, you can do it completely handheld and it's nuts. I went for a walk last night and took my phone as well, which is the Moto Z. And the Moto Z did do a good job considering how little light there was, but compared to the P20, it's something else. This phone can just capture so much light, way more than my eyes could even see. I even pointed both these phones at a completely black patch of sky, and the P20 was able to catch a clouds and stars. Seriously impressive. And even the video at night was sweet. You can't use it in complete darkness like the night mode, but there wasn't much noise and was still clear. So yeah, Huawei definitely have one of the best cameras on the market right now. Now this phone also has 960fps slow motion, like the S9, but in this case I don't think it performed as well. Samsung give you a way to anticipate an object you want to slow down, but the P20 it's completely manual, and because it captures 960fps or 0.3 of a second, I found that even when I had a countdown and was expecting the moment to hit the capture button, I still missed it most of the time. There were also a few cases where objects that were moving really fast would have like a warping effect, which I don't remember ever seeing on the S9. But when this feature does work right, it looks really good. And this bundled with all the other amazing features, the AI recognition, the night mode, I think Huawei definitely have the better camera. Now finally, let's talk about battery life. Somehow, Huawei made this phone just as thin as an iPhone X, but were able to fit a 4000 mAh battery inside. And it lasts ages. We were on this phone all day, taking videos, taking photos, using apps. And when it was finally time to go home, this phone still had 65% battery left. So under normal use, you could easily get two days. This is far better than any other flagship right now. And once again, Huawei have done an amazing job. So there it is. This handset is top notch. It's like half the price of an iPhone 10 and a couple hundred bucks cheaper than an S9 and performs really well. The CPU is solid, there's no slowdowns, it can play games sweet. It's a really solid option right now. So I hope you enjoyed the review of the P20 and the P20 Pro. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.